CataractCoach.com, decentered LASIK flap, how the cataract surgery and astigmatic treatment are different now. This patient had LASIK about 20 years ago, and with that red reflex, we're looking to find the LASIK flap outline. And you can see a little bit of it. Look carefully. This dry wax cell sponge is going to help to delineate that. A helpful hint to see the LASIK flaps, let the eye dry out, and then to gently touch the cornea and depress it very gently, and that again will highlight the edge of the LASIK flap. And you can see this LASIK flap is very descended. There it is. It's very decentered. So we can no longer make our standard temporal phaco incision because we don't want our phaco incision to intersect the LASIK flap. And this LASIK flap goes right close to the limbus there temporally. So we're sitting superior. So we're sitting superior. We're going to make a small paracentesis very carefully to avoid the LASIK flap edge right at the limbus. And that looks good. And this eye, the ablation, luckily, was reasonably centered, and that's helped a lot. But the patient still has some degree of irregularity in the astigmatism, so much so that we determined a toric lens would probably not serve him very well. So we're going to do instead an incisional approach to treating the astigmatism. So putting viscoelastic in to fill up the eye, Here's how we're going to do it differently. We're going to use our diamond keratome, and we're going to make an incision on the steep axis, or steep meridian. We're going to line that up, and there's the diamond. It's about 2.75 millimeters wide. And as we make this, we make it right on that steep meridian. Good tunnel length, good architecture. I like it. That'll help a little bit with the astigmatism. And now what we're going to do is make an opposite corneal incision. Well, my apologies for having this less than perfectly centered. We're going to help pull the eye down a little bit. You'll be able to see that. But you're using the same technique and making the same type of incision. There you go. Now you can see it. Again, another full thickness, full width, phaco incision, just opposite it. And I think this is going to help us re uh, reduce his astigmatism to an acceptable level. We'll continue the case. Everything else is going to be normal. We'll center up the eye here. We'll do our standard capsular rexus. At the end of the case, we have to remember we're going to have two incisions to seal up. So remember also to tell the patient ahead of time you're not going to be able to treat all the aberrations that are in the cornea. Because this patient has a little bit of an increased amount of irregularity, that's going to be there even after the surgery. Our monofocal eye well won't address that. Here's the end of the case, lens in the capsule bag. It looks great, beautifully centered. And remember now again, we have to seal up two different incisions. So here's the superior incision, sealing it up with a little, a little bit of hydration. You don't need too much hydration here, just enough to seal it. As long as your incision architecture is good, it should seal very well. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side of the cornea. So once we have that sealed up, we'll check it and make sure it's completely watertight. Here's the hydration on the opposite side. And if you want to, you can also fluorescein strip and do a check there. But everything looks great here. The patient had a beautiful outcome. Thanks for watching.